Do you love audiobooks? You can get a free 30-day trial membership to audible.com by visiting audibletrial.com slash divebarrockstar. They have thousands of audiobook titles, as well as podcasts, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, A-list comedy, and exclusive Audible originals you won't find anywhere else. Get your free trial membership at audibletrial.com slash divebarrockstar. Welcome to the Dive Bar Rockstar Podcast, a show exploring the lives of professional musicians of all types, touring musicians, recording artists, songwriters, engineers, bar bands, wedding bands, and anyone making their living in the music industry. Whether you've dreamed of being a professional or you already are one, this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Eric Baines, and I hope that you not only find some entertainment here, but also some helpful tips, trade secrets, and ideas that will help you achieve your dreams. Today is going to be a really smooth day. This is going to be all about smooth jazz. For those of you don't, that don't know, I started my career in smooth jazz, playing with Keiko Matsui, Nelson Rangel, uh, Lee Rittenauer, Greg Karukas, all kinds of people. I spent about 16, 17 years playing smooth jazz, contemporary jazz, until I moved on to other things. And that's a whole, going to be a whole other episode, how I got from smooth jazz to country music. But uh, I did. <laughs> so my guest today is an awesome smooth jazz saxophonist. I played with him on Keiko Matsui. He's played with Ronnie Laws, Bobby Lyle. He was a member of the Sax Pack for a while with Jeff Koshua and Steve Cole before becoming a top charting solo artist. He has two number one hit songs, five top 10 Billboard singles, and a number one debut album. He was dubbed Debut Artist of the Year 2008 by Smooth Jazz News, and he was given the keys to the city of Syracuse, New York, and had a day dedicated to him. He has Jackie Joyner Day. It's crazy. Uh, he's re he released his seventh album, Touch, last year. And he's one of the hardest working and smartest people I know. So please enjoy my conversation with Jackie Joyner. I noticed your last record's on your own label. My own label. label. That's Joyner awesome. Media Company. Nice. That's it. And that's, uh, that's uh, and that put out Touch, yeah. which was my, you know, it's like a romantic. Yeah, I listened to know. it. I listened to it yesterday. All oh, the you way did? Through, all the way through, man. Do you like it? Yeah. It's very kind of old school. Yeah, yeah, it's got a little old school vibe to it, you know, a little old school R and B. You know, mm -hmm. I did a lot of uh, the production mostly on it. You yeah. know, uh, actually on the on the um, title cut touch, I'm playing everything like the drums, programming, the live drum programming, wow. uh, the, the the bass trillion that I'm using. Only thing oh, I'm not cool. playing is um, <clears throat> guitar, which I Kyle Bolden who plays with the Jacksons. Oh yeah, oh. he's playing guitar on that. That's cool. Um, so that he's was great. A, that was kind of a fun record, you know. Um, uh, it was my most mellow record. Yeah, you know that's it's, what it struck me as. It's yeah, all sort yeah. of really <clears throat> relaxed and uh, even like when I was recording it, I was you know I was playing extremely softly. Like uh, literally, uh, it was very low volume coming from the sax, yeah. and and um, just to make sure I wasn't playing too loudly, I actually had my headphones kind of beefed up with the saxophone so that so that I could feel it, uh -huh. so I could say, okay, you know, hey break it back a little bit yeah so that was a whole no that's idea. that's kind of how i sing when oh, i'm in the it? studio most of the time i'm like a real right up on the mic mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. sing too loud kind of oh, you know okay. until you get to the chorus and then I, yeah, 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 I, yeah, I, yeah do whatever i do but I, I like that really close up to the mic kind of mm -hmm. intimate sound you know yeah and, and you know i was real careful with like the way i used the compression on a saxophone too because mm -hmm. i didn't want it i wanted the sax to have you know some dynamics you yeah. know because uh, some of the other songs or uh, some you know other records are a lot of the you know it's a lot of impact alto playing so there's a lot of compression and stuff like that right right but this right. one is more of just like leveling you know with a, mm -hmm. like a little bit of compression <clears throat> well it sounds great I thought it was really awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's it's it was fun. You know, I mean, you know, every record you learn something new. Yeah, you know, you know, right. okay, you know, I could have done this or I should have done that or.
And you know. produced all your records. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, gosh, it's amazing when you look back and you listen, you're like, holy crap, I really could have fixed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then How come I couldn't hear and that? And it's on you. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> you like, have man, no one to blame. <laughs> yeah, you listen to it and you listen back, you're like, oh, man, I couldn't hear that. How come no one tell me? <laughs> no one said anything right. to me. <laughs> well, have you ever every... wished that you could work with an outside producer? Or... Well, you know, actually, um, I have a couple of secret producers that are, you know, that are really good that, uh-huh. that I've been working with on, on some... On some stuff. Um, oh, that's cool. Do you uh, like that, keep them in a box or something? Uh, yeah, you yeah, let them, yeah, You let them yeah. out when you're ready to work, and then you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, a couple of you know, a couple of people in a, in a, in a cut. But um, um, I'm I'm I, I I'm actually going to be writing some stuff with uh, a some some you know some reputable people too. You know, like mm-hmm. some some songs are writing together. Paul, me and Paul Brown are working on a song. Oh, cool. Um, we also we actually did a song together. Um, on my second album too, it's called "When the Time Is Right." Ooh, <laughs> then what happens? Writer, you know, to Rick Braun, to you know, we're very uh, cool on something. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I'm I do the same thing. I produce all my own stuff, but I do have a fantasy of one day being able to afford like. If I didn't have to do the engineering and all the make all the decisions and I could just be the artist, like how that'd cool be, would that that'd be? That'd be great. You know? It's amazing. <laughs> just you know, like what if you just all you had to do was focus on was your sound yeah like, as your can you imagine like or just you, getting that melody right yeah you know? exactly exactly you know it's it's crazy like when you're in the studio it's like there's so many like little nuances that um when you're when you're playing and you're just like playing and you have the music playing and you're not recording like oh, okay it sounds great but then when you when you actually play it on tape you like you know this 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 has to be this note has to be longer right this note was too loud and mm, you know it's just yeah. like all that little stuff people just don't know like the time you oh, know, i know I know. That you have to put into all of that stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. And editing, and, 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 and then wake up the next day and you're like, man, this just sounds like shit. I mean, <laughs> I <laughs> I thought, last night I was like, man, this is the greatest song ever. <laughs> Come yeah. listen to it fresh in the morning. You're like, what in the world was I thinking? You know, so. Yeah, I know. And it takes you out of that creative space because it's so technical. It, it, you, you know, know? When you, and that's the thing, you know, when you're technical, I can tell now when I'm, when I'm being super technical about it, mm-hmm. I just get up and walk away from it. <laughs> just leave. Like, yeah. because I know that I'm not being creative. Right. And there are times where you, you know, you you you're not set up to record. The microphone's not hooked up, and that's when like some magical stuff is right, like coming. Right. And it's like by the time you 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 turn on yeah. stuff, you 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 set the preamp, mm-hmm. it's all gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. And it, you know, I've only in the last, probably in the last year since I've had the studio and stuff and been able to just be out here and not worried about being too loud for the wife or whatever, you know, <laughs> um, it, it, now it's like all this stuff has become another instrument. I've finally gotten decent enough at all the technical stuff where it's all kind of flowing. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, the other thing I do though is when I'm writing, I just use my phone. Like Me I record too. to my phone because I don't even want to get. In, I don't want to hook up a mic. I don't want to do any of that. You know, just I, that when I'm writing, I got a keyboard and a, and a phone or a guitar and a phone. You know, a guitar. See, that's what I should learn how to do. But I do use my phone. Like when I when I have a melody, I'm using my phone. I mean, got, yeah. Um, but yeah. now you know, gosh, it took long enough for me to figure out how to record saxophone <laughs> I don't know, maybe 15 years yeah. finally figure it out how to do it <laughs> you know so now it's it's you know i know i know when it's sounding good you know before i'm recording and i know i know how to set the compressor and all of that stuff right you know, and, which is really super important with the saxophone and also like mm-hmm. the plugins you know like uh, i used to just like just throw a bunch of stuff on it just you know just keep pushing it until it sounds good keep yeah. adding plugins until it finally <laughs> sounds good you know but really now it's like it's not you know as long as you got a good level and got a really good recording coming in mm-hmm. you don't you'd be surprised how little you have to do to make it sound good right you know right. so now you it's like the stuff that i'm doing uh it's mostly subtractive like eq most of my eq like if you were yeah. to see my eq like on my saxophone you'd be like, hey, there's no high end it's just, just dips here and there right. you know it's, yeah. it's, that's it it's no because when yeah. you dip in the low end the high end is boosts up well especially when you were using that u87 because ah. that's pretty bright you don't <laughs> need to you, add any highs on that yeah one. yeah yeah oh no no you're using the u87 gold <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. and what yeah. preamp are you uh, just using right. plug-in? i'm using oh, the focus okay. right preamp that's uh it's kind of uh what is the model like a i can't digital? remember it, but it's it's not digital it's oh. it's all it's a it's a, it's old school oh cool um but it has a built-in compressor that i use only sometimes on the sax mm-hmm. there's a there's a plug-in called uh soothe 
S O O T H E. So uh-huh. basically, what it does is um, it's it automatically learns with a horribleness, no, horribleness of the sound, <laughs> and it's just EQing it out. Oh, got you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just so you can see it kind of like saying, okay, yeah, no one's going to really be interested in hearing that. You can turn <laughs> the knob to see how much, how aggressive you want it to be. Wow. And it really just like, like for symbols and things like that, it really just like, just automatically do that. Like, And I like to do that before it goes to the compressor. Yeah. <laughs> so it just identifies frequencies that, that most people don't like. Exactly. Exactly. And it takes them out. That's so great, it's an right? EQ. It's like a smart EQ. Yeah. And you that's know? becoming more and more what I'm doing is just like presets because the, uh, some of these plugins are just coming with stuff already set up, you know, and I'm just yeah. going to the preset and being like, oh, let's do a great <laughs> snare drum, you know, and then there it is. And yeah. it's so much easier now for sure. And yeah. you were saying before that you use the wave stuff, and I've just recently gotten into that, and that stuff. Oh man, Wave not is, only is it great, it's inexpensive. Yeah, yeah, it used know? to be really expensive, but now yeah. you can get each plug in. It's like 100, 150 bucks. Like I, I love the sound of the SSL. Um, EQ on bass. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it yeah. sounds great. There's there's a there's an actual setting for bass. It just I don't know what it does, but the EQ it just like it just makes it so present. Yeah. And um I use the SSL um on I use the V comp and the SSL, but mostly the SSL compressor on the saxophone. Yeah. Um That's only awesome. thing I do is, you know, anytime it's working in a box, I usually like to compress a, a very little, you know, so, and then and then maybe yeah. add another one, right? And compress a little bit more, yeah. Rather than compress a lot on one, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, I I usually put the mic through this LA six ten, mm-hmm. so I'll put a little compression there because it's old okay. school, it's analog, you know. Yeah, it's, sounds really good. But I don't want to over compress, so I can. And then I usually end up putting like a eleven seventy six like plug in on mm-hmm. it or, mm-hmm. or whatever, um, mm-hmm. but. But yeah, I mean, it's it's so important though. I feel yeah. like when I tr- uh, travel around the country and someone hands me a demo tape or like their album, mm-hmm. I feel like the biggest thing that's misunderstood or missing is compression. You know, the guitar should sound bigger than that. The, the mm-hmm. kick drum should be bigger. Like yeah, yeah, this yeah. whole thing could be better if you just knew how to work some compression. Yeah, you know? yeah. Compression also is an effect too. I mean, you know, you, if you know what you're doing, you can really make yeah. stuff sound really, sure. really good, you know. Yeah. And of course, I love using the tape saturation. I mean, I love the Kramer yeah. Master tape. Yeah, yeah, I have that too. Oh, yeah. man, I think sounds just wonderful, yeah. you know. It's just like you, you turn it on, you turn it off, and just like, I don't know, it just sounds better on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've also got the Abbey Road Chambers. I haven't. I, I, is that what is that? Who makes that? Is that? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's Waves. Is that Waves too? Yeah. I haven't checked that one I'm, out. No, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they have a whole Abbey Road series. I've seen a lot and of the, the Abbey Road chambers Road's are like amazing reverbs and, wow. and like it's real stuff. But again, the presets. It's all I about thought the it, only you know? thing that ever existed was Altiverb. I didn't know there was any other reverbs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. I uh, mean, Waves have. So waves you're still using one. Altiverb? Is that what I, you're saying? The Altiverb 7. I'm, I, it's just, <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't wow. know. It's just, I love. No wonder I, you have that old school sound. <laughs> I just, I love <laughs> the um, the uh, plate, the vocal plate on it. it yeah. It's no, it's just, great. Yeah, it yeah. Great. It's just, you know, of course, you could, it's got a but, whole bunch of other settings. But there are other things that have come out. That's what I, you know, I didn't know that. We were on Keiko, Keiko Matsui together. Keiko Matsui. For years. How many years were you in that band? A long time. I think 11 years. Because I think years. I win. You yes. win. You definitely win. I was 12. That's like 11 years. No, I started like 2007. Okay. That's when I did my first show. Wow. So, yeah. So, you almost. Oh. Yeah, like 11 years. I, yeah. yeah, I can't believe that. I know. It goes by fast. Jeez. But it was, uh, <laughs> that was where we met. And that yeah, was. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah first experience touring was, together that yeah, yeah 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 it was an awesome experience I, no, I don't I know how, so. when I, you look back i i i i, w- I, I wouldn't trade it. it was a great yeah. it was a great experience i learned so much you know and just the places you know that we went to i mean about azerbaijan yeah. and touring ukraine you know yeah. well, you I, were saying, I, I was I'm, able to be will smith for like a tire month in russia <laughs> that was great you know i really right. abused that uh, <laughs> michael jordan <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you said the first time you met me, and I, I vaguely remember. I think we rehearsed first. No, but, we did rehearse. In, in the States. I, yeah, but then yeah, our first gig together, technically. Was Moscow. Was Moscow. Yes, yeah. yes. We rehearsed, and I think I 
only learned like three songs because Christian right. said, hey, you're just going to play like these three songs. Right. And then when Keiko was like, no, you're playing eight songs. I was like, okay. You know, so yeah. I'm, I'm on the plane. What was that song? Uh, da, 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 whatever that song is. Da, 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 uh, White Gate. Yeah, White Gate. I'm on a... <laughs> I'm on a <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're, I'm you're on really flight. out of it. That's I'm good. A, yeah, I'm on a flight learning that track. And, yeah, that was a hard and, song. And Doll and, and some of these weird, weird yeah. tunes. But, uh, very unique music. Very unique. People, it's hard to say what that is. And it's probably why, because I sort of started my exit out of smooth jazz a few years before leaving her band because her music is it's kind of smooth world. jazz or straight up smooth jazz and then there's like some world stuff and there's yeah, some yeah, old yeah. school fusion-y things yeah, yeah, yeah. and that white gate was more of the fusion note after note after note kind of track <laughs> you know? and like yeah it's not something like oh yeah I kind of know it no 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 you either do, you, <laughs> you either do know, know it or you or don't because this thing is hard you know <laughs> yeah, and yeah. super arranged yeah it's interesting uh, you know Keiko um like uh her saxophone parts aren't like repetitive like no. like on uh a lot of smooth jazz you know uh, uh melodies and and verses like it'll be different like the second chorus would be like just a slight different on the saxophone and she she will really notice that and really really want it even though it's right. just like four or five notes it's like yeah. super important right <laughs> And was yeah. that the first time you'd ever had to deal with a gig like that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, I, you know, honestly, I think I kind of needed that because it kind of opened me up a little bit, you know, to because otherwise, you know, I probably have been trapped in this cycle of uh, loopiness. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, you know, I mean, so uh, it wasn't it wasn't like the, my my whole sound as far as like I like soul, I like funk, you know, and R and B, which is what I really wanted to do. This yeah. not, not that wasn't what Keiko was, but at the same time, it kind of helped open up some things, you know. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. I mean, I I was a musical director, so I kind of hired a lot of people, and mm -hmm. you know, you know, through her or whatever. She yeah. does the actual hiring, but I would yeah, yeah. I would bring people to her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. and that was probably the hardest thing to get across to people. It's like when I hand you the CD, I'm not <laughs> saying like kind of learn this stuff or like put your take on it. I'm saying she's gonna want to hear that drum fill. She's going to want to hear that, that lick. that exact lick that's right yeah, there. That exactly. was not a moment in time that the guy came up with something cool. <laughs> that's the part. Exactly. You know? And that's great. the thing, because a lot of people think it's open for interpretation. Right, it's yeah. Especially on saxophone. It's like, yeah. oh, man, you, you're going to be in yeah. for a treat. And that was always kind of her department. I handled, like, the drums and guitar, mm -hmm. and she's more about the saxophone and yeah, yeah, yeah. all the melodic stuff. But um, yeah. But yeah, but I, mean, I know it, rhythm r rhythmically. It's it, uh, you know, it. She's you know, that's that's a thing. I mean, her rhythm stuff. I mean, like a great romance. That's that track. Mm -hmm. Excellent yeah, track. Yeah, yeah, I love that record, Moyo. That, mm -hmm, that's my yeah. favorite Keiko. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. When I when I uh, hear her uh, uh, performing some of those tunes, I'm like, man, this is just this yeah. is great. It's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, <laughs> yeah, was that. Richard Bono. That was the first Richard Bono. I think Bono it was Richard Bono. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the whole, the record, South African. Where they kind of like wrote songs together and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which for the first time in my but, history. By the way, if you're listening, Richard Bono, I got a track I'd really love you to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's got like this African kind of feel to it. Should I call him? Yeah. Should we just call him up now? Let's, yeah. let's hit the phone lines. No, I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not bad either. You could call me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. I'm sure, I had I'm to sure. play his parts for years. Because that was what I was going to say is that previous to that, I, I kind of described the gig as me playing whole notes and then the drummer just going off. It was like oh, such really? a drum gig. But then she starts writing tunes and with Richard Bona, who's just a fantastic bass player, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, oh, wow, I got stuff to play now. You know, now this gig is just taking a whole different it's fun life, now you know? yeah 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 Whoa, what a bass solo okay great let's do this yeah 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 <laughs> so did you enjoy the travel you know i would say uh half the time yeah yeah <laughs> i mean uh it was it was definitely it definitely put me out of my comfort zone yeah uh a wide majority of the time i was like holy crap i'm not sure how long i can do this yeah. i mean body aches you know oh, in your man. 20s is you know <laughs> yeah oh i hear you what was i 27 28 when i was playing with keiko right yeah man i was like jeez this hurts yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> Kicking what Suey hurts. <laughs> it hurts, right? Man, <laughs> no. I didn't realize it was this tough checking in. Yeah. Jesus. I mean, well, every tour, <laughs> even in the States, started with a red eye because, you know, yeah. you know, there's not a lot of money. I don't know. You could talk more of this now that you're an artist. <laughs> you know, if you can save a night in a room, then you're saving money. So we would always start with a red eye. You yeah. show up at nine in the morning, morning, get some sleep if your room's ready to check into. Which is only 25% of the time. <laughs> right. And then you got to go right to the gig or the sound check yeah. you know so yeah, you that, start that, off those... the tour with no sleep if you yeah, can't yeah. sleep on a plane don't yeah, even yeah, yeah, don't yeah, even yeah. bother trying to do the gig yeah exactly if you can't t- hard. you know if you can't sleep on a plane because that yeah. that those red eyes i'm not good with those man yeah, it's I just know. so you know you get there in the morning i'm like you know i really need to get some sleep and it's like you know your rooms aren't ready you know and yeah, yeah that hurts and, and then sound, long sound check and then show yeah that yeah. painful <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then we start going to well, they, well, you started in Moscow, so it, for you it was their whole time there. But then you start thinking about Japan flights and yeah. Eastern Europe, South Africa. Like, yeah, it's uh, man, those flights—they're really longer flights, so you can get a little bit more relaxed and you can get some sleep. But and lot, even even when we toured Russia, we were on train. That, that was those were great. Yeah. You know, yeah, except for except for get, except for getting on the train, right? And getting yeah, off yeah, the yeah. train, yeah, yeah, and getting yeah. down the hotel, and right. you know, basically being like minus ten degrees or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when you're on the train for that time, I'm like, yeah. okay, this because it would be like overnight. It would be overnight, and like, we'd have bunks, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's depending true. on you know, depending on who you're sharing the room with. Yeah, right. <laughs> just, just, uh, not, not, <laughs> just not with Steve, not with pick. Steve Reed or or, or <laughs> you know the like. <laughs> oh my God, Steve Reed, of course, Steve. You know, percussionist uh, originally from the Rippingtons, but yeah, he was yeah. with Keiko for a good six years or so, and he's a fabulous guy. I think but he's, uh, <laughs> whoo, he's a challenge sometimes a challenge in, the, uh, in the travel department. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know what? A great percussionist. Yeah, you know, and I added a lot I, to. I had, a, I had him do. Um, percussion on my second album and it's just amazing it's just uh, uh is that uh it's 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 super random it's like yeah completely unpredictable it's like right. he went and grabbed this thing over there but he wasn't like prepared to grab it so it was like you would have never known he didn't show anything that was going to say he was going to grab this other instrument and do something with it and throw it back <laughs> right 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 yeah which made him perfect for keiko stuff yeah because you know? yeah, yeah. she's got this sort of ethereal kind of atmospheric vibe, you know, and he's, that's him, him, you know? Yeah, exactly. He's this little, (laughs) 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 that was cool. I, you know, it was crazy. Like, uh, the, 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 uh, time that I went, well, Steve left the band I, and I was still playing with Keiko for probably four or five years yeah. after that. So yeah, cause I was it was there when interesting uh, uh, getting used to not having him there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the sound without him there, you know. Yeah. So It adds a lot of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it looks great too, you know. How did you get the gig in the first place, actually? Uh, I was on the Smooth Jazz Cruise and I think Keiko was performing there, and I think Christian was on there. Oh, got you. So uh, Christian called my manager. Steve Chapman was my manager at the time. And then he said, hey, you want to do this, uh, you know, this is gig, it's Keiko Matsui. He said, you know, so a manager called me and said, you know, they're having a rehearsal on this day. I didn't know that we were going to Russia or anything. And I was like, okay, cool, you know, how much it pays or whatever, you know. So, And then they offered me the money, and uh, I was like, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> this this doesn't record facial expressions, does it? It doesn't. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, he just made a really happy face. <laughs> That's the money. <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so then i went and did it and i was excited you know to travel and stuff it was so yeah. weird because we almost didn't go to moscow it's like we didn't get the flight and i was like okay oh where's gosh. the flight and where's the you know i was calling my manager i was like hey you know we're supposed to be leaving tonight <laughs> no well it wasn't that serious but it was yeah. like the next couple of days yeah. and i think at the very super last minute you know we get the flights to moscow i'm like man this is like super last minute i think Greco, yeah. who's on my next uh, Greco record on it? Uh, I'm doing an EP that's coming out oh, cool. this summer. Greco play guitar on it. It sounds sounds great. He's or it's, I think it sounds great. I'm just just it's rough. It's at a rough rough <laughs> rough time. I'll let you check it out. Okay, cool. Um, but uh, yeah, and I don't think he had a fight coming back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's probably right. But this is all bad stuff. So it was just really interesting because you, I, I hadn't known of you before. I think you had just moved to L.A. Yeah, I was long. in L.A. for well, I moved to L.A. in 2004. So 
I was there for you know, like two, three years, you know. Okay, so, gotcha. um, but I I wasn't really on the scene or or. I didn't but have then, any by albums the time out. I left the band, you're like number one charting albums are yeah. happening. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun to watch your career just grow while, yeah. while mine was just staying stagnant. No, I don't. <laughs> no, but, no, but you it's, know, it's... but as you got sort of more well-known and bigger, it was like Keiko doesn't really say that on stage. She doesn't, yeah. she didn't, you know, it's her gig. Like with all due respect, you know, like mm-hmm. it's her gig and, and it's about her, but it was interesting because we never played any of your songs, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was just it, interesting. At some point, there's got to be a tipping point where you're like, well, yeah, how do yeah. you just not say it's Jakeem Joyner? Everyone who's a fan of smooth jazz now knows who you are. Yeah, you know? exactly. And that became uh, a thing, you know. Uh, you know, the, uh, at the time, I think uh, it, when I was starting it with Keiko and just starting to really get my career off the ground, which was like around two. 2009 was where I had a number one song on the radio and mm-hmm. but I didn't really have a lot of money until the BMI stuff started coming in like later right so so I really kind of needed the money right? <laughs> especially if it was like you know yeah. seven gigs you know that's you know so yeah. there was this kind of like yeah. cognitive distance going to you know hey you know so yeah. um and, and you know I I felt I mean I was I was getting the heat from the industry in in a, in a way that I don't know if Keiko knew oh. um <clears throat> That they were like, you know, hey man, you know, she she should be doing that, she should be saying that or whatever, you know. So, right. and even a manager at the time, so people were kind of, you know, hey, you know, that's. So there was that, <laughs> and, then, and then of course, you know, there's your mortgage too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, I and just she this, toured a lot. So she toured a lot. It so a good, it was, you know, to be able to juggle your own career and hers, her gig was easy for that kind of because there was it, space in the schedule, mm-hmm. but she also toward a good amount over exactly. the course of a year so exactly yeah. exactly i mean but then there you know there came a point to where it was like you know hey man you know just you know do, i think uh like around 2016 or 17 I, I was very doing limited gigs like maybe just four or five in an entire year mm-hmm. you know and then it just and, and i just allowed to dwindle down you know she'll say okay i'm gonna do the bergs thing okay great so i, I did just the two songs and then that was it Got you. You know, so it was, Got it was, it. Uh, it wasn't like this, you know, you're in the band kind of a thing. Right. So, um, so and, you're more of a featured guy. So, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. And she kind of accepted that too. Yeah. You know, and she's a great person. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't mean to, it, it's just these are tricky things you deal with just being in a music business. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? it is. Things it is. I mean, it's, you ba- it's a balancing act, you know, because, you know, yeah. this is, this is like your livelihood, honestly, you know, and it's, it's yeah. you know, so. Uh, you have to cut your teeth. I call it, you know, yeah. <laughs> putting in the work. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> but she's also what I liked about her was that she's she was always really loyal to her band, and, yeah, and yeah, kind of yeah. still is. She's out yeah, with, yeah. The, with same, the same same guys. Same guys for, yeah, you know, and she always insisted on having a band, which mm-hmm. also seems to be a different. Actually, I started to see that trend. She started to do more cruises where it's like she's the featured artist and they have a house band. Yeah. And then I was like, uh, well, that's kind of a sign. I'm, and now, you know, in the smooth jazz things, because you were a part of also the uh, sax pack. Right? Sax pack, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And like, that's like you get a bunch of artists together and then there's one band. So that's yeah. like two bands less than there were before. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> so I'm like, maybe exactly. I need to think of something else to do because... Because we're like, you know, because uh, the sax pack is Jeff... Was Jeff you know, the original sax pack is actually Jeff Kaishua, Steve Cole, and Kim Waters. Right. So, but then I, I came to, to the sax pack. So I was doing the sax pack and Keiko Matsui and my own thing. And I think that was like a couple of years, like maybe three or four years yeah. where that was going on. But it's like, you know, Jeff would be like, okay, so he, are you cool with him on bass and him on bass? And he's like, so we're thinking we're going to go with this one on drums and, we, and he'll just shoot us a text and be like, are we cool? Like, okay, cool. Yeah. Bernie Dressel. Great. Or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. whoever. So right. whoever it is at the time. Mm-hmm. And you know, we all kind of agree on that. Um, cool. So it was cool. And sometimes, you know, we won't have guitar, you know, to cut down on cost. It'll just be bass, mm-hmm. drums and, and keyboards. You know, yeah. So, um, but uh, again, it's all a balancing act, you know, with that because the truth of the matter is, you know, smooth jazz wasn't on a incline; is actually kind of on a de- decline. Right. So, right. artists are getting paid less. There's there's less money to go around. You know, um, agents are trying to get you to do it for this, and you're like, oh, okay, you know, we well, we yeah. did it for this this time, you know. So right, it's like, right. you know, what, you know, how are we going to do that? Or you know, you get a situation where like, oh, come on, we'll pay you this and we'll hire the band. Mm-hmm. But I tried that, and you're like, 
the band sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, so it's like, yeah. you go in town and it's like, you, you think everything's cool. You had a nice time to relax. You slept on a plane and you get the sound check and you're like, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> this is no, going to be a long yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. Yeah. Man, no I matter how good your charts are, you get people matter. that say they read just to get the gig, but they, they, don't, they, can't. they don't. They read. didn't learn this stuff. And, oh, or everything will sound Latin or everything, <laughs> just, or everything I'm swinging. <laughs> right. I'm like, right. you know, like this is exactly. 16th straight, you know, right. this is not swung, you know, and it's super yeah. important. Just little things like that that really annoy you and drive you crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. It's a it's a challenge in the the whole jazz thing because yeah, money. and so it, you, you've been out here doing it still. Is it, is it yeah. still feel like it's kind of declining, or do you think it's going to be around in ten years? <laughs> I think it will be around for those who are smart about it. You know, yeah. you know, the truth of the matter is, is I, the fans are there. Radio has has been a, a, on a steady decline for the past several years, mm-hmm. um, but um, so so there's not there's no more radio to push concerts. So artists are pushing right. their shows on social media now. Right. You know, so that's that's been an interesting thing. And if artists aren't willing to do that. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, Which ends might, up being a you, lot more work. Yeah, it's more work. Artists. It's more work. I mean, because you're already doing work producing the record. Yeah, you know, it's just crazy. Because I was like, man, back in the day, all you had to do was just play <laughs> and be good. Like yeah. just just, just work wear a on cool shirt. Wear a cool shirt, you know, <laughs> and just be good at what be you do. Good, but yeah. now it's like you got to you're producing. You're yeah. you're if you if you don't have the money, you're mixing, and then now you're also promoting. You you get your promoters like, hey man, we need you to push the show, which yeah. is the most annoying text that an artist can ever get. Is hey man, could you push the show for next weekend? It's just like from a quote unquote promoter. Like, <laughs> no, I can't. You're the promoter. I'm the one who plays the saxophone. You push the show. That's, exactly. Like by definition, yeah. <laughs> you promote the show. Like <laughs> bullet I know. point it, to promoters, please it's do not say that. Maddening, man. Maddening. <laughs> <laughs> they want to do everything, you know. It's just yeah. it's just crazy. It's like because honestly, I think promoters, you know, look. I don't think they really know what it takes to put to make a record. I don't think they yeah. know what it takes to do a performance, to prepare for a performance, to right. prepare to write songs. So they just think it's just a thing, but you're also supposed to be responsible for all of this other stuff. I mean, it, you know, we're not super, you know, Superman, you know. Right. It's like, you know, we we're, we're not good at everything. We sometimes we're just good at certain things, yeah. you know. So yeah. And that's okay, you know. And the promoters, are, you know, you need to be good at marketing. You should be good on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and everything else too. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. come on, you know. It's just like yeah. people are like, hey man, where have you been? You haven't been on, you know, you haven't been on Facebook. I'm like, yeah, because I'm writing a song right now. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We want me to be on yeah. Facebook chatting with you or writing a song. And I think overall that adds to the decline of music over, you know, of music. Like, yeah, like yeah. Be- the quality it, of music because people are spending too much time doing this other stuff. Like, you know, we live in L.A. Mm-hmm. There used to be a Sunset Strip that was a badass music scene down there. Yeah, where yeah you yeah. went down there to see the scene because the bands were great. Mm-hmm. And it was all this. Then they started kind of pay to play and like, pay to these, play. But you know, you buy, you buy tickets and then you sell your own tickets and like all the wor- all the workload that was supposed to be a club thing. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I, what am? Is it my job to promote your club? Yeah. I'm here to play great music. You get people in the club. Yeah. So now you have bands that aren't necessarily great at their instruments or great at writing yeah. songs, but they have 300 friends. Yeah. And so they're going to be able to. Do it. So now now you go down there and it's hit or miss whether anything's going to be good because it doesn't yeah. matter whether they're good. It matters whether they good. bring in people. Yeah. And that and overall that's just brings everything down. The quality and of you're, music. And you're an exception because you're yeah. – Awesome player, thank you. Awesome writer, awesome producer, and thank you're still you. and you're willing to take on all this work, and you're smart. It's just yeah. like you said, yeah, yeah. Like you're smart about all this stuff, and yeah. I mean, it's just no one's going to do it for you, which is crazy because you 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 have to. It's like nowadays the climate is is you have to get to this intersection of your 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 art and business it's mm-hmm. like now you have to have this business mind and you just have to start thinking about fans and different things like that so it, it's a it's another low i don't think everyone's built for it no and i don't think everyone should be right and maybe that's what separates the men from the boys i guess <laughs> hey. or the the girls from the women i don't uh, know <laughs> you know look i think that that you know it's it would be nice if it were to 
be more about, you know, talent and, and allowing the artists to just be authentically art, artistic and, and not have to focus so much on promotion and all of these things. I mean, yeah. because you're actually, you, you don't, you, you can't tell, but you'll, you'll, you'll start slipping with your music and you'll start picking it up on the promotion, you know, right. but in your albums, it starts out, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, man, you know, I, and, and there are some albums that I've listened to, uh, some artists that I've listened to for years and I've, and I, and I listened to some of the recent stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it, but right. I, I'm like, man, I, 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 it's like, you know, it's not, yeah. it's just not where it used to be, you yeah. know? Well, the other thing is that people aren't paying for music anymore, so. And that's the thing. There's not, like, there used to be a budget for records that was way bigger, and then you would have a producer, and you'd have a team of people in the studio all making decisions, and all, you know, yeah. very talented producer people are yeah. worthwhile, not that you're not, but exactly. it also helps to have other ears, you know, and that's the and thing. other qualified ears, and executive producers, and, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but there's no budget for that now. Now they give you however much they give you for an advance and you, yeah. you make a record. Yeah. Well, you know, nowadays, I mean, shoot, I mean, it, it's, the advance isn't even worth the, I mean, it's just, it's nowadays, it's even thinking from the um, executive side mm-hmm. in advance that you're giving it, you know, just think about like, you have to think how many records are they going to sell? How much is their streaming worth? Right. You know, right. because like, cause I have my own label now, Jordan and media company. If I'm signing someone, you mm-hmm. know, uh, the, the, you have you have to make your money back if you're going to give them advance. So you have to be able to qualify their value pretty early, you know, right. pretty quickly, right? You exactly, know, yeah. uh, and 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 not try to make these big bold predictions, you know, and just mm-hmm. kind of like be, play it to where you know on average, you know, you're probably going to do this. Your streams are going to probably do this, so we'll probably make this amount of money, and so then that would basically means that we can probably give you this, right? Which is which is uh, here's your three bucks. <laughs> 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 well i mean Good you know luck. it's it's crazy because i mean in, the streamings have changed you know with their pay uh what they pay and you know because i think itunes is starting to i'm not sure if they've done it yet but uh i don't know if they're still selling like this uh each song but they're pushing more of the um what is it uh you pay monthly for um, Apple Music or uh, yeah yeah you pay Instead monthly of, and then now you can just listen to as many songs as you right, want right. you know what I'm saying but you don't own anything you don't own anything yeah. so it's you know it's weird man I'm just wondering where music is going to be yeah you know five years from now I can't predict to be honest with you yeah <laughs> I mean because if uh, if if you're not making money in streaming, you can't sell records because you're like, ah, I'd buy the record, but you know, I bought this brand new car and there's not even the CD I don't player. I know how to play it. Exactly, there's no CD yeah. player in my car. Right. Yeah. I bought a car and I almost didn't. I I, I didn't check for a CD, <laughs> but luckily it had it because it was oh, wow, not. Wow, I was wow. not concerned. Yeah, I don't and, have one in my car now. Yeah. So, but I last two cars because if you can't sell an actual product, yeah. As an artist, how can you make money? Well, it goes back to the Renaissance days where people pay to go see you, which is another reason that right now is like so devastating because now it's like the only way yeah. you can make money is doing shows. And, and now it's on shows. And now we can't even work. You, you know, can't even work. They, you can't go out. You can't do anything. I mean, you know, I can't go to a bar. I mean, this yeah. is seriously depressing. Yeah, it's... it's I mean, it's like, uh, it's... Who would have thought... <laughs> 2020 would have looked anything like this. I mean, I was I was geared up for 2020. I was, ah, yeah, yeah this is going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, uh-huh. and there you go. Like, you know, gosh, I mean, I, you know, you, when I get back on stage, you know, I just hope I'm not crazy or a lunatic or anything like that or something's <laughs> off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could What's have slowly to gone insane without noticing it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because when you're like by yourself so much, it's like you don't know you're you're insane until you're with other people. And then, right. and then they see you off and you're like, wow, it's nothing wrong. Right. wrong. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> I just kicked the cat. And what's wrong with that? <laughs> I do it all the time at home now. That's the big deal. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's good to get around people. That, oh, hey, yeah, that's, that's why I say thanks for inviting me for the for the podcast yeah you know, it was good to get out the house and yeah <laughs> no i'm glad you came too because I've, I've done a couple of remotes and it's always yeah. the sound is like not yeah. quite you know and like i don't have it we're we're basically six feet apart yeah yeah, like, yeah basically if we just you know i don't know it's such <laughs> a trick I don't, and you don't know what to believe anymore when you watch I the know, news and like, like yeah. i wear a mask whenever i go out but at the same time it's like 
Does it you really don't work? have it. I don't have it. We're good. Let's just do a <laughs> podcast. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Uh, but I understand everybody has different a different take on it and different fears and whatnot. So I'm really glad that you came over because yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. been me and my wife for weeks, <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> months. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, man. It's just gosh. I, yeah, I tell you, man. That's that can make two people enemies <laughs> in a really well, big way. It's, it's been good so far. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Maybe the dog kind of, yeah. you know. Cause and they, for the last three years, I've been on the road for a lot. Of, I mean, we've okay. – I've done probably 140 shows with Dwight a year, you know, oh, so okay. it's a lot of road. I mean, we're usually out for the weekend and we come home for, mm-hmm. the, for like Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we're out for longer than that, but it's been a lot. So it's actually been nice for me to be it's, home. It, you, know, you know, it's been nice for me too. I mean, it's, yeah. it's been cool to kind of like, cause, cause you know, I had these, these goals that were just like on the, on the wall that I haven't really messed with and, yeah. and these songs that weren't finished. And um, mm-hmm. so it's, it's kind of cool cool to be able to you know just kind of get back into honestly you know if you're not crazy <laughs> you can center yourself you can you, you can yeah. probably come out a better person you know yeah and a better musician like now you know it's like a, every single day i'm making sure i'm practicing because i'm not playing mm-hmm. shows uh so right. you know practicing every day is like all that much more important yeah um i and you know i will say you know a lot of my fans are like yeah when are you gonna do a, a, a facebook live right. gonna, and it's just like uh, you know, I don't that know. That is the thing right now. It is a thing, you know. So it's like, should I do it? I don't know. I don't feel like it or whatever. I'm not yeah. sure what it is. Um, it's And everyone's doing it. And I'm like, you know, okay, let them have it. And I'll just you know, focus on writing writing music, I guess. But I probably yeah. will do some at some point. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I did one with a friend of mine. And then I got this idea to do a podcast. And I've been just devoted. By, I'm like, no, this is what I'm going to do with my time. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Let's get this thing going. And I've yeah. I've been kind of... A, a nerd fan of podcasts for the oh, last okay. you know few years and i'm like yeah, yeah. and i have a lot of people like you that i'd love to talk to and and yeah. i think people will get a lot out of these conversations i'm hoping that they will so i'm like yeah. why don't i do this and give back a little bit and create yeah. something that you know can add to the music community here in la or wherever across the country so i think it's great I man i think this is great what you're doing i'm a die so there are a lot of us out of work right now, uh, waiting to get back to playing shows and touring. And I know I've had to do whatever I can do to take my mind off the situation from time to time. And one of the ways to pass the time is to catch up on some books you've missed. But if you're like me and you don't love to read, <laughs> there's another way you can consume. Audible.com has thousands of titles to choose from, including audiobooks about music production, songwriting, the music business, music theory, instructional audiobooks, and biographies of your favorite musical heroes. But besides audiobooks, you can also listen to podcasts, theatrical performances, A-list comedy, and exclusive audio originals you won't find anywhere else. Right now, you can get a free 30-day trial if you visit audibletrial.com slash dive bar rockstar that's audibletrial.com slash dive bar rockstar and you can catch up on your audio reading i'd like to take a second to thank you for listening to the dive bar rockstar podcast as a new podcast getting the word out is a vital part of what it takes to keep the show on the road uh or off the road as the current case may be if you would like to support the podcast all you got to do is subscribe wherever you listen And if you have an extra minute or two, please leave a review. You can also share and follow the podcast on your social media apps. Okay, enough begging. I hope you're having fun. And once again, thank you for listening. You know, there's a lot of musicians out there. There's a lot of struggling musicians out there, man, yeah. especially now. Yeah. And, um, you know, the whole thing, like, um, I actually am... Uh, finishing up a book that's uh that's f- tailored to musicians and uh oh. yeah yeah so it's uh the title is as how to, uh, how to turn your music talent into a six figure income well that's awesome yeah yeah so so um so i go into like um some it's it it it, it does cross the business it, it does it does force you to have to have a business mind because the truth of the matter is yeah. is that you are a product like right. in the end you're a brand and a brand either is valuable or not. And valuable, you're valuable to your mom and your family. We get that. Right. But we're talking about valuable for money. Right. 
You see what I'm saying? So that's a difference. Yeah, because my mom ain't going to pay shit for me. <laughs> but she's going to love you. She's going to love your music. <laughs> right, 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 right. But right. what about making your music valuable to the marketplace? Right. You see what I'm saying? Yes, because there's a, there, the, the, the thinking like that is not necessarily artistic thinking. Mm-hmm. It's more just value worth money worth thinking you know yeah, what i'm saying so absolutely. so so that's kind of how that book that i that i'm finishing up is is um is is tailored to to that and the streaming and and the fans and growing the fan base and also uh uh how do you keep them keep them active and keep them growing and keep them buying because their fans they're going to buy your music you know for the rest of their lives they're going right. to support you right. you know what i'm saying so yeah. and that's your money Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. so so that's an that's an important thing. I mean, unless you want to just play guitar, you know, and just for yourself. Yeah. You know, and, the, well, and that's always cool too. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah, absolutely. This book is not for though. In fact, you might be a happier person if you, you just decide would. to do that. You, you know? probably would. I've, I've debated that for years I, in my head. You, you, you know? know what? That's that, and I think I think that's that's true. But then there's a lot of like I get a lot of emails saying, "How do I make it in the industry?" You know, yeah. it's like, well, industry is money. Yeah. You know, exactly. so it's like I want to make it in the industry yeah. means that now you're talking money. Now you're becoming an entrepreneur. So that's a world. That's and like even a if thing. you're a side man. I mean, I've put out my own records and stuff, but most of my living, have, I've been a bass player, singer, mm-hmm. you know, a, mm-hmm. a, even as a side man, like I, some of the um, one thing I always say is like, I don't have the luxury of necessarily liking the music that I'm playing every given <laughs> night, you know, cause sometimes you're going to do whatever gig is going to pay you. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's one thing you give up mm-hmm. when you decide to be a, yeah. a, a professional musician. I no exactly. longer have that luxury of like, I just do this because I love music. Well, some nights you ain't going to love that music. No, you're not. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. I mean, because yeah, you're right. Because if you're, if you're actually at home and you're performing I mean, you're just you're just playing for yourself, and you can make your own. You can make yourself happy, mm-hmm. you know, and you're not thinking about money, which is actually a great right. place to be. Honestly, yeah, you can write great music when you're not really concerned about what everyone else cares right. and thinks about it. But then right. when you say, "Gosh, you know, I wish I could do this for a living," yeah. well, living equals money. Yeah, L- yeah. money equals industry value yeah. brand. Yeah. So you know, so you know, if you're going to step into that world. It's going to come with a lot of... <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's a lot harder work than you think. It is, it is, you know. You know. Especially as an artist. Yeah. It's a little easier for me, and that's one of the reasons I am a sideman, honestly, because I had my own band back in the 90s when I got out of college, and I went back to Denver, and I put together with my brother and stuff. Mm-hmm. And after even just, maybe we were together three years, mm-hmm. by the end of that, after just having to be, because I was the band leader. hmm having to do all this work and book the gigs and book the sound guy that week. And some then players started subbing out. Now I don't know who my drummer is going to be. I'm playing <laughs> five nights a week. If you got a bad guy for five nights, it's not oh, going to be yeah. a good week, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> I recall I, doing something like that where we play, I don't know if it was Yoshi's two shows a night. I don't know who it was that we had, but I was like, okay, by Sunday on the second gig, I'm pretty sure you're going to, Figure out the gig. <laughs> I mean, oh, exactly. at least hopefully by then. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday night is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just got to the point where I'm like, I don't, I, don't, I want to take my bass to the gig, play the songs, get my money, and go home. You know what I mean? I'm tired of doing this. I don't care about my original music anymore. You know, so that always that all sort of went to the to the side. But you know, there's like, a brand no. for side men too. Uh-huh. You creating a oh, brand yeah. as a side man as well because either you're the side man that's dependable or not, and the industry yes. will know that. And right. you also have value or not based as a side man, yeah, you know, sure. as a drummer or a bass player or anything like that too. So um, musicians who are you know who are thinking about you know being a side man, you know, your uh, word of mouth is like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, you're yeah. <laughs> yeah that's another boring. big rule. Just no matter what the gig is, kill it, kill it. Like be as good as you possibly can, even if it's the worst. Especially, well, especially if you live in a major city like yeah. L.A. Like, yeah, yeah, you don't know talk. who's going to be in that bar. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and you'd be amazed at who just shows up to your gig. So yeah. even if it's the a dumb little duo or something, be as best that you possibly can. You know, because yeah. that, yeah, that's true. That. <laughs> well, I can't wait to read that book. Is yeah, it going to yeah, be an yeah, audio yeah. book? Because I'm not really Oh, good you at know, reading. I think I am going to have one as an audio. Can you make book. a movie? Because I don't have uh, <laughs> time for books. You know, I don't know. <laughs> no, it will be an audio. You can listen to it when you're working no. out. But that's a great, that's exactly, uh, 
I think turn your music need. into money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you want. Well, you're gonna have to come back when it's out, and we'll talk all about that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, speaking of books, so I'm just hanging out on Facebook, scrolling through, and and see a novel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Zaria. That, yes, <laughs> that you wrote. Like, yes. So yes. just to get off the topic of music for a second, <laughs> you're also a, a novelist. Yeah, yeah, man. I I uh, finished that. It's surprising. I, I was writing that while I was touring with Keiko. Believe it or not. Wow. Um. Um. But uh, yeah, man. I, I've always been a science fiction kind of a geek dude, you know, <laughs> uh, and critic of mm. movies. You know, <laughs> they should have done this better. or I should have been this, and you know. So then I decided to write my own thing, and use my ridiculous, crazy imagination, and, and just put any because you, know, you can do anything with anything. any character. It's just like I'm Superman, like wow. I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> this is my world. This is my world, and I really enjoyed it. And I and the novel's been doing great. You know, That's cool. I tour with it. Uh, I mean, books are heavy though. So yeah. I mean, the book is like yeah. a pound. So it's like a four hundred pages. So yeah. I can only bring. You know, right. <laughs> depending on, you know, if I got my goal status or not. Yeah. Those <laughs> airlines will get you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it's on ebook and things like that. But um, you can actually, I sold a lot uh, actually on the road, believe it or not. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Hundreds, in the thousands probably. And also, know? like, what a great idea in this new book that you're, are you going to print the new book? I'm going to well? print that too, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. going to be, because in a way, it's all, it's all just merch now. And people yeah. want, even though they don't have CDs to buy, people still want to go home with something. <laughs> Exactly. You they know. want to go home with something. I mean, because, you know, I've been thinking about this because, uh, you know, CDs, it, it, honestly, man, like last year, I would say last year was the worst year for selling CDs mm -hmm. that I've ever seen. I mean, people, but, but, you know, when you have your own label, you can actually see the downloads and stuff that I never had access to. I was right. like, holy crap, man, iTunes is kicking. <laughs> you know, I mean, but because I didn't know, I didn't, when you were the label, you, you're you not able to make that connection. Right. But when you started my own label, you know, now 24 you hours, real time. you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I didn't sell a lot of CDs, but you know, you mm -hmm. clearly this this iTunes was yeah. because of the show, right? You know, exactly. so 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 that's 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 good yeah. insights. Not merch, but people, but but obviously you do want to have something. CDs, yeah. I don't know. You know, I got to figure it out. I yeah, mean, yeah, because I, at one point I just decided that this is just merch. You know, so like people will buy them whether I, mean, they, I, mean, I think it was a tipping point again. You know, it's like there was a point where it's like people are just buying them because they're merch and they want to take some home. Maybe they're going to play it. Maybe they're not. But now, it's, it, like you said, it gets increasingly harder and harder to play a CD. Now it's like, I don't even want and, that kind of merch. I like, mean, unless unless you're selling the booklet or something. It's right, like, right, It's right, like right. these are the people yeah. who performed it and who played what, when, yeah. and how. And you're just signing that and there's a picture and, you know, it doesn't even have to have a CD. Are people it. doing that? That's a great idea. I, I don't know. Because that is really frustrating, not having liner notes anymore. Especially in a jazz thing where you've got featured artists on songs and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And like... How do I know that now? Exactly. How do I know that Eric Baines is playing that bass line? And I guess you can add the CD to the thing. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like right, yeah. It's like you're repackaging it in their head. <laughs> but it might be worth it just to print booklets and sell them for yeah, like yeah, fifty yeah. cents or something. I don't. You know, know. What I'm saying, you know, like you can yeah. sell it. I mean, because I don't know. I mean, CDs printing is, is going down. Yeah. Um, but just it, the thing is, is, is that, well, if I'm going to sell you the booklet, I might as well put the CD with it. <laughs> and now we're back to square one. <laughs> but I'm telling you, but I'm just I will telling you, I guess I'm going to tell you that it's a booklet. And then that way you're, when you come to the merch table, you're not thinking CD, you're thinking booklet, but then there's yeah. a CD, but it's the same thing. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't know. But I will throw out the CD. I have no use for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me so. neither. And I'll probably rebuy it on iTunes on my phone on That's the road the thing. somewhere. Yeah, so yeah. Even, I won't even import it because I don't even have a CD player on my computer. So oh, wow. how yeah. do I even get you know I don't have I mean? a CD player on my computer either. Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> even do that CDs now. are done, man. Yeah. It's, it's really... It's, it's done. It's crazy. It's a drag, really, because the sound quality is still the It's best. better. It's way better. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I mean, if you when you when you put the C D and you're like, well, there it is. It's right. like there is the mix. Yeah. <laughs> and then on your yeah. Well, if you're <laughs> listening to it on your phone, it's ridiculous anyways. But but you know what? But though, even with the headphones, the MP three is is nothing compared you, to you, you know when I mixed this last record on touch, w one crazy thing is is I did a lot of mixing with the phone speakers. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, right. literally because I wanted to make sure and it's it's so crazy because normally I wouldn't have to think about that. You yeah. know, yeah. and I could just use that and use my car and use a TV and different things like that. Because yeah. I do use my TV speakers 
to just to hear what's coming out and stuff right. like that, yeah. or, you know, and it turn everything because it's like a good mono, so, you know, kind mm-hmm. of a sound. Yeah. It's just like you can kind of hear the balance, but it's the same with the phone too. So it's like you know, man, this you, you listen like man, this song is nothing without the bass because right. because uh, now you know, they don't understand it. So mm-hmm. you like they don't know what you're trying to do because all they hear is drums and vocals or drums and sax. So yeah. now you got to go back in and make sure that you can hear the bass yeah. on the phone. Right. Exactly. You know, so and, uh, what that means is rolling off the bass. Exactly. You know what I mean? Now people you make that bass that. thinner. You have so to make it thinner. Come through your tiny speakers. And that's a honk more. It's crazy. <laughs> you know? know, it's like, so you got, you're adding this honk, you know, I've got this little distortion <laughs> thing that I do with the bass to kind of make it a little distorted. And you're right. Cut, rolling off the low end, adding some uh, honk, honkness to it, the 2K ish, the, the yeah. stuff that really that you don't like. Right. I'm adding it into the bass so that you can hear it on the phone. Yeah. And then when you play it, you're like, okay, Okay, now when they're scrolling down Instagram and they hear it, it won't sound like crap. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, the, you know, the thing is, it's literally that is what pe- people are listening to the music, yeah. especially when they're scrolling. They're scrolling with their phone and they're used, they're not, they don't have headphones on. Right. It's right. rare that yeah. someone is watching their phone with headphones. Right. So yeah. the speakers on the phone is super yeah. important. I also have a, a Bluetooth speaker that I'll I, check with. Oh, oh yeah. Because See, it has a good. little more low end, so then you can get a combination of like it's too honky and, you know, it's not. Yeah, it's yeah. You boomy. know what? That's what I need to use because I have the, uh, I don't know if this will work, but I have the uh, Amazon, um, what's this? Yeah, the. Alexis, or yeah, Alexis. you know the one that's eavesdropping on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The spy, <laughs> the spy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those, but you know what? Maybe somebody can develop a a uh, f- a a speaker system that's like a phone speaker system for mixing, where you can like literally right. have it in your studio, and it's just a little device or something, yeah. and then people can like hear it there and start EQing. In well, there. I mean, I de- I definitely send, I email myself an MP3 of the mix, mm-hmm. and then check it on my phone. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So me too. That's what I do. It's like, what are you gonna do? And it's it's particularly hard with your style of music, where bass is bass sort is of like there. an important thing. You yeah, know? it's it's harder. The more realistic, like for instance, um, the title cut, which is touch, is like all live band kind of sound. So uh-huh. those are the hardest because it's not like a pop where you can really like do weird stuff with the bass. And if it's like a keyboard bass, and you can really, right. but if it's like a real bass, yeah. and depending on what key that it's in. It can be challenging, you know. Yeah. So oh, it's you know, but I you, know I'm a bass player. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And that's, you know, it's like almost what you could do is maybe just like uh, record your bass just uh, by itself and just just MP MP3 yourself the bass and just see what it sounds like on the phone just by itself just to, and yeah, start yeah. messing with the EQ. I mean, I know you can probably use like a Garage Band or something like that. Just maybe just to see where you know where the sound is on the phone. Yeah so unfortunate <laughs> it's a weird time on all fronts i just feel like as a musician it's really tough right now which is an odd time to start a podcast encouraging people to be musicians i know but... when people are probably thinking you know what i'm so done with this crap i know right? <laughs> it's like you know i'm not getting paid and now i'm stuck at home and yeah. and forget playing and, and probably not even gonna know how to play by the time we can play it's like oh shoot i forgot okay i have worried about what's that. a c chord again i know <laughs> and i've been doing a lot more writing so i've been playing guitar and keyboards and like <laughs> I'll just play the bass and then that's done. It's yeah, not like, right. I mean, this is the longest I've gone in my entire. I mean, I started playing when I was nineteen, and pretty much full time. I went to school for a year, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, this is the longest I've gone without playing a gig, probably in thirty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's me too. Insane. It's crazy. This is. You can really lose your place. <laughs> you can, you yeah. Can, yeah, you gotta, yeah. you gotta stay on top of it. Go back on all those old songs, and and uh, you know that's the one thing I learned when it comes to practicing is you know try not to practice the same thing all the time. Some people practice the same thing, right? And it's like you gotta keep practicing something that feels uncomfortable, that kind of feels unnatural. So what do you practice? And Just, where do you get stuff to practice? Well, you know, I'm still a John Coltrane fan. I'm still a Charlie Parker nice. fan. Um, I love Cannonball. Um, so I'm listening to a lot of the uh, older 
guys you know that are that are playing and even like with mm-hmm. funk stuff like you know maceo's got a nice uh alto stuff you know he's a, he's a little funky <laughs> yeah he's a little funky funky yeah yeah funky <laughs> you know so uh so i'm listening to a lot of uh older horn because i, I don't want to lose touch because look i love smooth jazz and contemporary jazz as much as i do or as much as i can <laughs> but I, I love it as much as i love it that's pretty great <laughs> <laughs> as much as i love it but i will say that uh, I don't. You don't want to lose touch of the horn, the original sound, and what the horn's supposed to sound like. Because yeah. the people that are recording records, I'm like, is that really a saxophone? Yeah. <laughs> you know. So no that's why I'm listening to a lot of the older uh, guys. So you can, okay, you know, so you know, this is the sound of a saxophone. It's right. not supposed to sound like uh, um, <laughs> the toy or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I think is is really apparent in that in your Touch CD. That, yeah. That's maybe why I thought it sounded old school because it sounds real. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you know, I, I would say, like, I mean, this this record, uh, Touch was probably, I mean, I took my time on that. I took my time with the recording, with the with the playing and the approach. And the, like you said, the reverbs and stuff. I love the sound of the old school Whitney Houston. Yeah. You know, those mm-hmm. cool, ridiculous sound old school plates and stuff <laughs> <laughs> but you know they just sounded great on, on 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 the saxophone too but also you know tone wise i've always been a tone person and you know, maybe, maybe that's the reason why keiko enjoyed yeah. having me was like uh, uh, technical stuff is great but it's like for me it's like what are those three notes sound like those four right. notes you know like yeah. you know how do how do they sound you know their approach to that and that's that's the approach with touch is it's really just just it's like you know you're touching the saxophones like what if i was if i was recording it and i was playing it, it, it wouldn't feel like it's loud if you were sitting right there but you could be with other saxophone players but hold on oh, oh, oh my gosh let me get yeah, out of here yeah. you know oh yeah you know so yeah. um so so you know that's 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 the whole thing and then depending on how you have your microphones and different things set up i think you can really create a great sound with the saxophone yeah you know i mean a lot of people are just doing the same thing when they record their horns but there's a lot of tools you know even with re- using uh the two microphones um i was able to really capture a, a really rich sound that i didn't think it could come through the alto i mean because normally with soprano i'm always using two mics mm-hmm. but with the alto like having one pointing here and then the other one pointing kind of this way and just kind of like playing into the space right. rather than just into the microphone mm-hmm. but more so into the space of the room yeah you're kind of micing the room it's kind of like it's kind of like mic in the room because because my whole thing is it's like if i record the saxophone onto you know the computer and i and i hear it i'm like well that doesn't sound like the way it sounds when i'm playing right now right so i wanted to sound right. like how i'm sounding right now without anything being plugged into it mm-hmm. you know so yeah. so how do we create it to sound the way it sounds right here it sounds great here it sounds horrible on tape right so um it's the same thing like when you when you're doing sound check you like you know the, the monitors. These monitors are just like. Can we just make the sound sound like the way I sound? I right. sound. Right. <laughs> like I don't know what do you need to do to do that, but yeah. just make it sound like a saxophone. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's you know the greatest engineers. They go into the room and like listen to a drum kit. <laughs> and they go back into the control room and they try to make it sound like they just heard the drum kit. You yeah. know what I mean? And, or a guitar amp. So <laughs> listen to the guitar amp first. Yes, And yes. then go make it sound like that. You know? <laughs> it's a little harder when you don't have a control room and you're the guy doing both things. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. But it's uh, definitely a worthy goal. It's a worthy goal. <laughs> and make it you... sound like a, like a sax. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of crazy when you actually kind of have that mindset in the studio because it kind of changes things. Yeah. Because now you're not just like my whole thing in the beginning of my earlier records. Some of them great songs. Other them, I'm like, holy crap, that really sounds bad. But my <laughs> approach was to make it sound good once it gets in a box. Like once it's there, okay, fix it. That right. was my whole mind right. was to fix it mindset. Right. But now it's like I, I'm 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 before it's like I'm adjusting and, and getting the sound right in the microphone and different things like that before we even do anything. And right. I'm like, okay. And I listen to it and I'm like, no, that sounds like a horn player right there. That's cool. Let's make a song now. Right. <laughs> you know, until my daughter comes in and she pulls the microphone over here and <laughs> drags it over there and it just took me forever to set it up or she turns a knob or something. It's right. just like, you barely just got the, everything set and you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No kidding. <laughs> 
Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's uh, when I was a kid. We used to say, "We'll fix it in the mix." That was before computers. Yeah. But I uh, mean, you can fix a lot of things for sure. I fixed. You know, I brought a couple of saxophone players. I'm not going to mention. Well, I did a lot of fixing. <laughs> yeah. But isn't the mixing? Do you, you're doing the mixing as well. I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Like this. Isn't right, the this mixing last so much easier when you just so get it right the first time? It's crazy how much mixing mixing you don't have to do. Yeah. <laughs> you're, just make, you're just doing levels. You're like, you're like yeah, it's like, it's levels, like you're doing levels you know? and a little bit of compression here, but it's yeah. not like these catastrophes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that you're dealing with. Like, what am it's, I going to do with this? No, it's like, <laughs> it sounds good. There we go. It's like, everything yeah. sounds good. The symbols are cool. We haven't touched anything. Everything is like centered. There's no EQ on anything. Right. And the saxophone has no EQ on it. Everything is just like, and it, and it still sounds like you could actually listen to this even without doing anything. Right. And then <laughs> right. from from there, you yeah. do subtle little things, you know, yeah. just not over over pushing anything, you know, just a right. little, okay, you know, this is a little bit of compression here. And that's how it, you know, and it's just, that's how it works, you know, it just comes out nicely like that. Yeah. You know, no, and that's... then gain structure. I mean, the whole thing, like for me, back in the day, I used to record or, or have my recording, but I never really set the gains out. Like I would just have, okay, you know, just play whatever. But now it's like, you know, I, I know how to set the gain yeah. for everything. So there's headroom and all of those things that's like before you even fix anything, it's like these little fundamental things right. that really don't have anything to do with mixing. Mm-hmm. It's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. So. Wow. It's all learning. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. And you're, this is your seventh record? Seven. Yeah. yeah. So that's. Yeah. It's a lot of records, a lot of learning. It's a lot of learning. <laughs> so, uh, are you uh, already working on the next one, or you... you know, I'm I plan on putting an EP out with just like a couple of songs. All these songs uh, were recorded and and produced d- during quarantine. So, oh, cool. So it's like five songs, you know, maybe four or five if I get the fifth one done. Uh, but yeah, and yeah. it's all. I during mean, quarantine. that's my last thing was an EP because. Why not? You know, like <laughs> are being are people even buying whole records? You know, they're gonna it's, go and yeah, and and preview it on iTunes and buy the single that they want or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, so exactly, yeah, and that's what. And then you can put them out more often because you're doing less tunes. And the, and and that's another thing about actually keeping the streaming income coming in is the more that you put out there, the more it kind of keeps it going. Right, you know? it's so a numbers like, game. It's a numbers game. You can't yeah. like you know it's one of the crazy things is when I was signed. If I knew what I knew now, I Mm -hmm. would have been like, hey, guys, we need to put out an EP or we need to do, you know, because you you can't go a year and a half without that. It's just like your income just starts to just taper down, you know, Mm -hmm. so you got to. And then when you put out new music, the old it it levels out the older music and then people say, oh, wow, I didn't know you did this. Right. Oh, wow, that's cool. You know, so it's just like it helps. So it's always good to keep music out there. The consistent content. Consistent content. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Totally. You know, for real. Well, that's yeah. cool. It's yeah. great that it's all yours now. It's all mine. It's like, yeah, I don't just anything. <laughs> I didn't realize you could get paid that much from Sound Exchange. I was like, wow. What? I was like, yes. I was like, what? Man, have I known this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> how much were they getting? Well, it 50%? Is... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It is interesting because people think getting signed is the end all be all, but anymore. <laughs> It's, yeah. Again, it's going to take you a lot more work and a lot more investment. A lot like, more investment. I mean, I think it, what your path has been kind of good because you, 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 the label, you needed a label to get established. Yeah. And now you don't. No, I don't. Now you have your brand. Now you have your name. It's yeah. worth something, and yeah. now you can take over it. But to do all that stuff from the start would have been a challenge. I think it would have been a challenge, but I will say that things don't cost as much as it used to cost. Well, I mean, even recording doesn't cost as much. I think that, like honestly, uh, you can you can put, you can put it. I mean, I could probably put a cheap studio together that sounds good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With with you depending know, depending on the genre too. I mean, it will depend on the genre, but if you're, if you're, if it, you're, it will depend on your ear too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, I think that the, you will be relying more on that uh, um, if you're lacking in a lot of. But the if you're equipment. doing like rock music, is still really expensive to make because yeah. you need With the live drums. drums. You need a room that you can record them. The guitars. In. You, need, you need a preamp for every mic. You yeah. Know, you know? yeah, yeah, and that's and, expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. it kind of depends. But then again. The last few records I've made, I've programmed them right here but, on this you thing, know, and I'll, they sound live as anything. So samples are getting some, so great yeah, now like, that, like, some of the drums are are getting great. Yeah, like amazing. Yeah, I use <laughs> I still use Native Instruments Studio Drummer, and I, I if I 
hire out. I mean, these are samples that were recorded in like ocean the, way. Like if yeah, I hire it out, studio. I might get better playing, but, but they're not going to sound, sound as good. Exactly. So I, I've just learned to be a pretty good programmer. <laughs> and that's the thing, man. People can't tell. And, and you yeah, know, it's, I mean, okay, you know, maybe you it's might, true. maybe you might not fool well, Chad Wright or something, but, uh, yeah, right, right, right. But, but who's, you know, who's, who just listened to rock music that's not a musician? Yeah. 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 And especially when you're listening on your phone on an MP3, who cares? Yeah, you know, exactly. you're not going mean, to notice a difference. Down there. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like, it's crazy now. I mean, it's like, I wonder why some of these softwares even have like 96K and stuff. Like, what is the purpose yeah. of even having I all know. of this high bit if it's all going to be just MP3? I mean, actually, yeah. there are some pre pre preservation that happens in the higher end, you know, when you actually go down to MP3, depending on the bit quality right you know so right, right, right. uh so like it i do recommend like if you if you can do like a 96k when it gets bounced down in mp3 it does sound that's a little better it sounds a little better you know but I I 44 do. 20 48 24 that's what it's, I do. it's fine though that's yeah. like because because the 96 i mean it's, it's gonna it's gonna really run your processor down yeah. but if you if you like if you i would say you can do it if you just the, everything is done, but you just want to record in vocals, and maybe you can just bring that in just on the recorded vocals in 96K oh, or something like that. And then know. just bounce those down before you mix or Exactly. Something. Bounce them down. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I'll try that. Yeah, I think of the sessions that I do that people call me to do out of here, out of my studio, probably 30% want 96 Okay, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. most people mm -hmm. are still forty eight, twenty four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some people uh, are even just the sixteen, forty four, sixteen bit. <laughs> yeah, wow. I would definitely not recommend. That. Yeah, because yeah. you know, because the more the more sounds the that you add on a sixteen bit, the less the, yeah. the, the qualities are just start to. And decrease. when I changed to forty eight, I definitely noticed a difference. Yeah, it, it was a noticeable difference. Yeah, forty eight to ninety six. I, I haven't done a full tune or a record like that so i would say if, what, I've, what, I've, what, I've, what i've heard what i hear more about on 46 uh, 96 is more for like um um like movies like right. uh, like a, the that lower in like if you're watching a movie and a mm -hmm. volcano throw you know those kind yeah. of things so that's that, gonna hit your subwoofer e exactly exactly <laughs> and there's some certain some some high-end areas that are like really really rich up there right. but i don't think that it's something that's necessary for what we're listening to now i do think that there is i have noticed a, a difference on the higher end when bouncing down from there to mm -hmm. uh mp3 though oh yeah I don't know. Uh, maybe no one's probably even going to tell. Too. Well, this has been by <laughs> far the nerdiest interview yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <it's>, uh, <laughs> so I, I love it though. That's yeah, awesome. This is great. This has been great. This well, great. let me know when that EP comes out. Oh yeah, yeah. And, I'm trying, uh, we'll, trying to get it out in, Oct we'll in August. You know, some more in August. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe I'll send you some. You can tell me what it sounds. You know, tell me what you think. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I haven't seen you forever. It's been great to catch up. Yeah, well, you know, it's crazy. You've been like right here, and it's like, man, I've been driving by your house like, <laughs> oh, man, yeah, times. yeah. I live across, right across the street from the four hundred five. So you I literally mean, have crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize for some reason I thought you were further. Like now okay. we're right here, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because uh, I recorded, um, I recorded uh, uh, my record, my last record, which is. Um, What's the name of my last record? Main Street Beat. <laughs> I have it written down here. If oh, you yeah. Like. Okay. Yeah. Let me look at that. Main okay. Street Beat. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, Main Street Beat was like mostly all recorded like live. So, like, oh, cool. we, we did like eight or nine songs in one day. It's so interesting. Wow. The engineer was like, you know, no one's doing that now. I was like, <laughs> I, don't know. I, just, I just wanted to do it. So, yeah. well, we did finish. A and you're lot. talking about like, like this the rhythm section or just so, the whole band the rhythm section some of the saxophone i did more i did most of that at home but mm -hmm. most of all the rhythm section cool. um was done like for the whole record wow that's like cool. one day well we did one like that oh we did do one like that at uh, brian one. bromberg's studio yeah yeah you know i i think i think uh you know my mistake with that was that i should i should have i should have gotten the mix better oh yeah it was I think recorded it sounds nice. great it sounds cool but that's part of the learning <laughs> process too, you know. And yeah, yeah, it sounds cool. But I mean, if you play like some of the other stuff, and then yeah. you listen to that, you're like, okay, I can tell the difference. Right? <laughs> Did you mix that yourself? Which one? The 
uh, the Aerosmith song, uh, Don't Want to Miss a I Thing. I mixed that myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that your first time dealing with live drums? That was like my first time dealing that's, with it's a That's a different thing. You know what? But now it's like uh, with all the drum replacements and the kick drums and snares, if I don't <laughs> like it, I'm like, you know, this snare is yeah. not the right snare. And let's get this. And I'm like going through it. I'm like, okay, there we go. That and then funny. And then you go in and you can you can do a little, little tweaks here and there. And, and you got a brand new kick drum. And it's like. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like fun. lush and it's like, that's what we needed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in the, I don't know if I should name him, but I was in a session with a really extremely well-known um, engineer. Okay. Um, and he, it was funny because he was, we were talking about the drums. I'm like, yeah, it sounds pretty good. And he's like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to replace, I'm going to replace that kick anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, as soon as these guys leave, I'm replacing all that. <laughs> the snare. Those kick and snare are gone. <laughs> I, yeah, I replaced toms and, 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 and gotten some great stuff. I mean, yeah. like, holy crap, these sound so much better than, you know, so. Right. I mean, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a learning curve, but it's also fun to, to be able to do that. You oh know, man. With drums. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, you can't. It's 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 difficult to replace things like symbols and yeah. unless it's a crash, right? But definitely not like ride symbols or hi hats to it. Like you, can you can add, add to a crash. It. You can add a crash, but you I've done add, that before. You can add a crash. It's not much you can do with the hi hats. It's nah. too much going on. Yeah, you know, and depending on how the and mic it, is, and it's a high end thing. It goes through every. It goes the mics through everything. And, yeah, 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 yeah. And you still have the room sound if you if you change the tom. You still got the sound of the room to, room sound. But sometimes that kind of makes it even richer because now you've taken away the the actual mics that are on the toms, and now you just have the room right. from the tom, and then yeah. you added the, uh, a different tom, and now it's like, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I love it. Or even adding stuff, you're like, hey, I didn't do that. I didn't do that lick. <laughs> yeah, but I started out with samples and moved into live drums, and it's yeah, it's a tricky thing. You can't treat that bass drum like a bass drum sample necessarily. It's, mm -hmm. it's a part of a bigger thing now. It, exactly. And you've got to mix this big thing. It's this know? whole world. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it, it was so crazy when I first was mixing that Aerosmith song. Uh, I'm going to tell you, man, it was like the biggest headache. I was like, holy <laughs> crap. I was, you know, the hi-hat yeah. was everywhere, and it was just like... Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, isolate it. I was just, just annoying. But I mean, you know, now I've, I've got some, you know, I know how to do some, some things, even if I'm not replacing. On I had to. to get rid of the idea that like, it doesn't sound like I want it to sound and let me try to make it that. Mm -hmm. More of now, it's like I pull up the drums and listen to what it sounds like, mm -hmm. and just accept that. Mm -hmm. And now let me make that sound the best I can make it. Exactly. Instead of like, oh, this snare doesn't sound like that sample I like. Let me try to tweak it until it does. <laughs> it never ends well, you no, know. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> think of the thing as a whole. Except and like, the recording. Yeah, that you accept have. it. This is what you did, <laughs> and, which is, is another thing about like. You know, what you put in is going to make your life better when you're mixing. Exactly. Because if you get those drums, now it's like, I want that drum to sound right before I leave the studio. Exactly. You know, or before I push record even. Yeah. You know, I it's want so the critical. sound to be good because then, <laughs> then it's easy in the back end, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. crazy thing about mixing man it's like you know once you go in it's like half that's half the, that's like you half the job is actually the recording part is it is the yeah. mixing it's just like it sounds making it sound good when you go in you know yeah i mean i've done a, a, a lot of work like with fixing stuff like with saxophones in back in the day mm -hmm. and i tell you man it's like i've learned so much now it's like you know ha not having to do that you know <laughs> i know 
Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Yeah. I remember my friend Rudy Cardenas. Oh. Cardenas. Do you, I think you've met him. I'm a singer. Him. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I did a like a journey kind of record with him and mm-hmm. uh Chad played, Chad Wright. Mm-hmm. He's another he's been on the show. Yeah, oh nice. <laughs> Chad. And uh he he played and he in, kind of engineers his own thing. So mm-hmm. I said I need it to sound like Journey and he sent me tracks that sound like Journey. It was great, <laughs> you know. But then for the when we got to the vocals and then I we went kind of went around studios and mm-hmm. did most of it live but not all together. But yeah. then when we did the vo- the vocals, I rented a uh U47, like a vintage U47. Oh studio. nice. And it just it's my favorite mic, you know, mm-hmm. he just killed it. And then when it came time to mix, there was a couple of things that I, like the vocals especially, I tried to EQ. I'm like, well, maybe it needs a little more. High. And uh, everything I did was just like, <laughs> nope. Don't, no, nope. no, I can't make this any better. Like don't. that means I did the 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 right thing in the first place. You yeah, know what right. I mean? I can't. This just sounds great. Just put the levels right. Yeah, you know, maybe you gotta adjust some EQ just to make everything not fight each other here yeah, and there. Yeah, but yeah. man, it was a big, huge. The same lesson, you know, just like just get it right in the first place. And yeah, then you don't gotta do anything. Yeah. But anyways, wow. Yeah. We can't get a drink because no bars are open. I know. I got some beers right there, though. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a ginger ale in there. Is that a ginger ale? Is that a beer? No, it's a uh, lime soda water, oh. but you can have it. I'll take it. Take it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, man. Cool. Thank you. I'm a Man, I really love talking to this dude, and it's so great to see him. It was great being on the road with him for so many years because we could have conversations like this all the time. And, you know, we probably sound a little bit like old dudes bitching about the music business, uh, but everyone has their their generation before them that bitches about them and, and whatnot. But I also think everyone kind of has a point, and, and, you know, it's hard to... Uh, keep up with this ever-changing music business sometimes and changes is, is uh, sometimes weird and abrupt and and uh, can take you by surprise uh, so it's easy to bitch about but I wanted to talk a little bit more about Keiko Matsui and what Jakim had mentioned about her being really particular about her melodies and you know the four or five notes that are subtle little changes that you wouldn't think that were very important were extremely important to her and she cared a lot about getting her music right on stage and when I first got in the band she was married to Kazu Matsui and Kazu was kind of the boss he produced the records and produced all this the stage stuff and we did this trio piece and there was a bass solo in it and it was my first tour of Japan with her and we got to this big auditorium in Tokyo and We do the sound check and I play the solo and I'm feeling great about myself and I think I did pretty good. And I got back stage and he was not satisfied. And I was kind of taken aback a little bit. So he pulls me aside and he says, "Uh, play more religiously. I don't know, you know, Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, just follow the religious path of the bass player. And me as a, you know, former Berkeley student and a guy who had done many jazz gigs kind of was like, I don't, I didn't learn that at Berkeley. So I don't know what you're trying to say, but um, okay, you know, and I'm a little, you know, bent out of shape because this is my solo. This is supposed to be my time to do my thing, you know, but it wasn't. <laughs> and so I get on stage and spent the rest of the, I don't know, we were probably out for three weeks in Japan or so. And every night was just trying to do different things. And and, uh, and eventually when I got back on some other gigs where I am doing my own thing, I've got this whole other bag of tricks that... Um, that I have, that, I, that I've learned and that I've figured out just from being forced to not do my normal thing. So in the long run, it ended up really great for my playing. I'm super grateful. And he eventually left, but Keiko still has that sort of vibe about her. She's, she wants it a certain way, even though it's an improvisational thing. So you end up um, kind of compromising and working together to get the kind of vibe that she's looking for. And in the end, if you really just drink the Kool-Aid, so to speak, um, I think you end up being a better player. I certainly did. I also can't wait to read his new book that he was talking about that he's finishing up and everything that he had to say about being a product and thinking of yourself as that and all those things that uh, go into, you know, being a professional musician versus a hobbyist. Um, That was really cool. And if anyone out there can... Do people... 
do they make booklets and sell them as merch? I don't think I'm smart enough to be the first one to ever have that idea, but I would, I would love to do that because I love, you know, it'd be nice to have liner notes and I, would people be willing to pay for that at a live show? I don't know. Well, email me and let me know if that's already happening and, uh, or if we've just invented the coolest thing to, to happen in 2020. I don't know. A couple of clarifications, because this show, as I've mentioned before, tends to turn into a, a bunch of names. Like, we just sit around and list names. I think that's what musicians do. It's kind of a language that we have. But Paul Brown is a contemporary jazz guitarist and producer, great producer. Check out his records. Christian is, we mentioned Christian a couple of times during the Keiko talk. He used to be Keiko's manager and brought Jakeem in on the gig. And we also mentioned Greco Barato, who is a great, great guitarist. He's played with Keiko. He played with Keiko for years. He also played with Katie Lang and Enrique Iglesias. And he has his own records out that you should definitely check out. He's awesome. And lastly, I did go to college for more than just a year. Um, I was in and out of Berkeley, but I, there was a solid year that I went to Berkeley that I didn't really gig a whole lot. I was just focusing on school. But other than that, I, I was working for most of my college years uh, before I got too busy. And, you know, between it being really expensive and me starting to work, I eventually dropped out, which is, is kind of common for people that go to Berkeley. It is really expensive. But at any rate, I hope you had a great time and you enjoyed Jackie Joyner. I'm a Wow, you've made it to the end. I'm hoping it's because you completely enjoyed yourself and are now filled with knowledge and inspiration to move forward with your dreams. If that is the case and you would like to stay informed of new episodes, live events, and general news, please go to divebarrockstar.com and sign up for the mailing list. If you have any questions, comments, corrections, or complaints about anything you hear on the show, please email me at fanmail at divebarrockstar.com and you may even end up on the show. We at the Dive Bar Rockstar Podcast, with all of our hearts, thank you for listening, and remember, it's all about dreams. 